Hey Scorpio, welcome to your bonus reading. Thank you so much for joining me today. Scorpio, I took a very small vacation this past weekend and I wrote down something for you guys when I was um, you know, traveling. And there was this very clear message around magic, you know, around expecting some type of result when you are either manifesting something, calling something in, inviting something into your life, that expecting result was not the way. And I don't know who this message is for. Uh, three of Wands, okay. Let's honor this message for a second. Uh, three of Wands and the Five of Pentacles as general energy. Five of Wands at the bottom of the deck, so yeah. There's something uncomfortable here, Scorpio. And I'm sorry, I just started the reading without an intro. You guys already know. Like, subscribe. It really makes a difference. I'm just very excited to read for you. So someone is expecting some type of result. Maybe it's the need for instant result or the need for a confirmation. If I can get this thing, I'm going to be able to move forward. If I can only get this confirmation, then my magic is real. Then I'm actually powerful. But again, it's not about the result. So we'll we'll see what comes up around that in the reading. Because again, I just uh, found this note in, in my phone that was for Scorpio. Uh, three of Wands and Five of Pentacles. There's a new beginning. It's already happening. Three of Wands is connected to Aries. I'm filming this video very close to the Aries season, which is the astrological new year. And five of pentacles, it's uncomfortable. It's kind of a contraction. We grow from that place. So there's something that feels uncomfortable. Again, you're not getting this instant result. You're not getting this confirmation that you desperately need and want. And it's part of this whole thing. That's, that's what I'm getting here. It's like, no, you're not doing anything wrong, Scorpio. There's no problem with you, with your magic, with your power. It is part of this process. So again, with the Three of Wands, something already started. Okay, let's dive deeper. I need to know more. There's always an element of mystery in your ratings. It makes sense, but it's it just gets me very excited and I I need to take a deep breath and stay grounded. Scorpio. Scorpio. Ace of Cups. Yeah, that's it. Four of Wands, okay. You're already exactly where you're supposed to be. Look at that, look at the Ace of Cups. There's already flowers growing out of the cups. I don't know if you heard my dog, but she's confirming. <laughs> and here, something already exists. It's very balanced. It is magical. The Four of Wands is the 11-11 card. It's, of course, the confirmation here that there's growth. So again, I think this reading will support you and come in as a confirmation of something that you cannot see yet. It already exists. I want to say it's already yours. It's just a matter of time. And you can see there's the little letter here. It's like it's on the way. It feels like it's a delayed thing. Uh, you know, when someone mails you something, you surrender. It's very eight of wands energy in the tarot. It's like, okay, I don't know if it's going to be delayed. I don't know when exactly they're going to get it, but it's there. It's coming. Let me just focus on different things. Let me just um, make space for any possibilities, really. I think the Four of Wands here represents that. You know, when I think about four, I think about some type of container. Can you make space for what is possible? 
And you know, all the fours in the tarot are connected to the emperor because it's number four. And when I think about the emperor, I think about taking up space in the world. But actually, I think the message of the emperor, especially right now, is there is a place for you. You know, there is this thing waiting for you. It is already yours, Scorpio. Okay, so I want to know what comes out of this. Clearly magic. This is something that's destined with the Four of Wands. Um, aligned with many synchronicities. So keep your eyes open. What are the repetitive numbers you're seeing? What are the little signs? We have five of swords. So already I've seen three fives in this reading. And the Wheel of Fortune is here. So Five of Swords is a doubt. It's someone that planted a seed of doubt in your mind. It's been growing, it's been expanding, but it's not yours. Five of Swords is very uncomfortable because it, it, it reminds us that our brains accumulate negative thoughts and a lot of the times it comes from people judging us from a comment or something that we've heard growing up so i think that you're working on releasing some of that figuring out what are the things that are actually your true beliefs and what are the things that are controlling you making you anxious, making you doubt yourself, and again, your magic and your power that comes from an old beliefs or a judgment that someone once uh, made. Wheel of Fortune is the most esoteric card in the tarot. It is always a good omen. I know that some people, and I use also to teach this card that way, like the wheel turns, but you don't know. You don't know what the outcome will be. After experiencing the Wheel of Fortune so many times in my personal life and in other people's reading, I know it is always a good sign. Our perspective might not be so good, but it is always a gift for us. So here, number 10, completion. You are complete with something that's been stressing you the f out <laughs> this is how i want to say it i can i don't want to swear too much on youtube but it's been stressing you out and it's uncomfortable because it's not yours to hold it's not something that you believe it's something that another person made you believe you're not good enough you're never going to get this thing uh your beliefs are bs I know personally, you know, as a Scorpio rising and just if I think about the Scorpios in my life, we've all been shamed for our magic in this life. And if you believe it, and I believe it, in previous life, um, it is so hard to show up authentically. And Scorpio is often shamed for how real and authentic they are. I think the goal here is to protect yourself from those judgment without building walls around yourself, which we can only gauge. It's very hard to maintain strong boundaries and not build walls around us. I think this is something I'll personally be working on my whole life. And I know a lot of you guys also good if you're past that and your boundaries are very solid, amazing. Send us some of that magic, medicine, and power. I think a lot of us need it. But um, this is it. We can only gauge. Uh, Ten of Pentacles is here. So it's interesting. We have five, five, ten, ten. And I'm sure there will be more repetitive numbers here. So there's a lot of synchronicities trying to tell you something like hey Scorpio chill out <laughs> trust 
Try to trust. And that's very hard, especially if you've been disappointed before. Especially if what you want is... It feels essential. I don't think it is necessarily, but it could feel essential. Ten of Pentacles is connected to our ancestors. And I just mentioned that. Um, how we've been shamed for our magic. We've been judged for being authentic. Because we work as a mirror. And that's the thing with water signs in general. I notice that they can trigger a lot of people. Because when you think about water signs, they're like the ocean. They reflect something. And a lot of people project when they deal with water sign. Seeing them so authentic, so real, it confronts them with their own demons, with their own hidden feelings and secrets. So here with the Ten of Pentacles, I think you're making peace with something it could be that you're having a lovely conversation with a family member and seeing through them something reflected or them seeing you really for the first time. There's something here about making peace with lineage, making peace with ancestors and family. I like that. Tell me more about this. Okay, Eight of Wands. I'm not reading reversals today, but I still want to honor that this card came through in reverse. So when I said that you have the opportunity to heal something with family, I also want to acknowledge that some people are not able to do that. That sometimes when we want to open up to a family member, they're not available either physically or mentally, emotionally, to receive what we have to say. So whatever way you are finding healing, forgiveness, and peace, it could also be just by yourself, just with yourself. You don't necessarily need this person to be there physically to find peace in your heart. And this is what wanting to come through with the Eight of Wands in the reverse. But... I, I called it, you know, I, I told you earlier, there's something about Eight of Wands, like this sense of trusting that the message is coming in, that the energy is moving, and it will find you. When the time is right, maybe in the most unexpected ways, in the most unexpected times, but it will find you. Your job right now is to trust. Your job is to trust nine of wands. It's not easy because you've been hurt in the past. Someone made you doubt. Also, your inner critique is extremely loud. You guys are a perfectionist. I don't know why not more people talk about this thing about Scorpio. You guys are such perfectionist. When it comes to your art, your style, your relationship, how you cultivate friendships and take care of other people. And I'm always very uncomfortable when people judge the Scorpio energy, you know, and they only think about the symbol of the scorpion. Like Scorpio will cut you out. Scorpio. I'm like, what? Scorpios are very tender beings and when you're lucky enough to have a Scorpio um, in your life especially you know in intimacy in like intimate moments you guys are very soft you can show up as very rough and um, sometimes very eccentric or just you know maybe cold but I, I don't know. I think this is like a huge misconception. When I think about a scorpion, I think about the fact that, you know, the shell is very hard, but the inside is soft. You just don't need everybody to see what's beneath this hard shell. 
it's none of their business. You let the right one in. Um, so again here, there's, there's this huge shift, I think, in perspective about yourself, about where you come from. And ultimately, like, where you're eventually going to go and the possibilities, the infinite possibilities of where this new beginning can lead you. Like, what are the different doors that are going to be opening from that wish, from that manifestation? We have the moon and we have, the, of course, the lobster here, which kind of fits with what I have talked about. And I love that about the moon card. Th this card says you're not supposed to know. Where's the magic? Like if we would know everything that would happen in our future, we would be so bored. How can we embrace the mystery? How can we accept just a little bit more, even if it's just 5%, that we don't have any control? Our ancestors did not have any control we don't have any control now, and in the future, we won't have any. It's like we're so obsessed with trying to be secure, feel security, and be grounded. And there was never ground beneath our feet to begin with. And that's such an important message with the moon. It's like, come on, you're not supposed to know. Stop trying, stop trying to control everything. And when I think about the lobster, you know, such an old creature, it's like, yeah, the energies you're dealing with right now, they were influenced by people and things that come from thousands of years ago. Again, it's like everything is connected, but it doesn't mean that we have any control here. Um, and that can be scary sometimes when we really let that sink in that we don't have control. We love to believe that we do, but we don't. But also it's like a relief because everyone's on the same boat when it comes to that. So here, again, I, I felt it before the reading. I felt it this weekend there's a little bit of anger when it comes to something that you don't feel enough control over. Let it go. Let it go. It's not worth it. Seven of Wands, I just said it. There's anger. Uh, anger is the only emotion that we have to release no matter what. No matter what. Or else it will come out in different ways, especially in, in our relationships and, and the way that we treat ourselves. So how are you releasing anger? Even if you don't feel angry in this moment, I think we all have built up anger hidden somewhere. And sometimes it's hidden very, very far. It's like locked away and we threw the key. But it wants to come out. Is it through creativity? Is it screaming in the pillow? Going for a run? Writing a song? I don't know. Use your creativity. Just let your mind run free, especially right now. If you feel this contraction, if you feel that there's disappointment and maybe anger around not getting what you want right now. And the two of pentacles. <laughs> it's interesting. You know, this card to me is like, you can have it all, but why do you want it all? Why do you want to be all things, you know? And it's very interesting um, that in the traditional version of this card, there's the massive infinity loop symbol. And this person is like juggling with two pentacles, like, okay, it's never going to end. I'm never going to learn that freaking lesson. Why am I always repeating the same mistake? Again, because we can only gauge when it comes to finding balance. There's no way we're gonna accomplish everything, do everything, know everything. We can only gauge. And in order to find balance, we need to make a lot of mistakes. It's part of this whole thing. And again, being a perfectionist, sometimes 
it's hard to honor the mistakes that we made. It's hard to see the beauty. Um, and I think this is part of your shadow work, Scorpio, especially if you have a lot of Scorpio in your chart, if you are a Scorpio sun, your opposite energy on the zodiacal wheel is Taurus, ruled by the planet Venus. So tapping into the beauty of all things, your own beauty, the beauty of the world, and again, trying to see the beauty in delays, challenges, struggles, I think it's part of your shadow work. Because when it comes to the, you know, the ugliness of the world and the darkness of the world, you guys are master at that. You guys understand that better than anyone in the Zodiac. So how can you tap into more beauty? And sometimes it's going to look like changing your hair, yeah. But other times it's, it's going to be totally different. It's going to transform into a song it's going to come out as you know a conversation or noticing the beauty in nature noticing the beauty also in someone that hurt you and i know that that might sound a little weird but i think this is a practice and you know for the people who are familiar with the word namaste um when I think about namaste personally, I'm like, I always try to see beyond the things that I don't like about someone. I'm welcoming and honoring all of that person. Not just the beauty, everything. So there's something about that, again, with the two of pentacles and this infinity loop. I'm honoring everything, all parts of myself. I don't need to love all of it. But I can honor and accept it. And I think that's important here for you. Okay, let me pick some oracle cards. I think that someone needed to hear this today, Scorpio. Someone needed to hear that whatever they want is coming. And the delay is necessary here. And you're not supposed to know why this is taking so much time. And I think your only job, your only mission right now is to adjust, engage while you're dealing with something uncomfortable. To not push away something because it is uncomfortable. To not give up on yourself and on this dream or this wish. We have synchronicity. Okay, it makes sense. I called it, you know? I love when that happens. The universe is on your side. Notice the signs around you. Sense, embrace, and co-create. I love that. So again, is it a number? Is it a word? Is it a tarot reading? Is it a feeling? Sometimes synchronicities can show up through a feeling. It's not just about the material. It's not just about the numbers. And it changes. I think it's just about choosing to believe. And I've talked about that before, but I think it, it bears a repeat. When it comes to angel numbers, when it comes to tarot, to magic, and all those things, it's like, I'm not crazy. I know that it's not necessarily a scientific Back, you know, that 1111, for example, is a message from my guides. I choose to believe that. This is the little control we have in this life when we choose to believe in something. And it doesn't make you woo woo, it doesn't make you crazy. You are holding space, making space for the possibility of something. And that, my friend, is beautiful. It is part of seeing the beauty. It is definitely part of the Scorpio shadow work, in my opinion. And we have sanctuary. Reducing distractions is necessary at this time. Retreat, center, and revive. So this is the oracle deck I created with iNaus. I co-created with them. And when I channel sanctuary, what I saw was the four of swords. This need to recharge, this need to 
put the oxygen mask on ourselves first. If the plane crashes, you cannot help other people if you don't save yourself first. And it's not necessarily about me first. It's about me too. So by recharging, by reducing distractions, which to me most of the time means less social media, less external influence, um, I really think you can give the chance to your intuition, the quiet voice of the intuition to become louder, you know, because when we are so influenced constantly by, you know, podcast and movies and Instagram and what people post and say, at one point it's like, what is real and what do I believe? I see and hear so many things on a daily basis. It's like, I need to disconnect from that for a while and actually live my life and not just try to copy or do what another person is doing. What does feel right for me in this moment? What does my body want? And if you use the tarot in in your own spiritual uh, practice, Try to pick cards and ask your body, like, hey, body, what do you want right now? What do you need? Also, brain, brain, nervous system, ego, what do you need right now? Your heart, your soul. I absolutely love to do those pulls, especially when I'm feeling a little bit disconnected from my body. I love to pick cards and just ask, hey, body, what the hell do you want right now? And it really makes a difference. And also, it helps you connect with the tarot differently. And I think that if you give yourself the time to analyze the image and the messages and how it feels in your body, it can really be a great teacher because the tarot is an amazing teacher. We just have to listen, you know. We have to give it time to reflect what it wants to reflect. So... I'm sending so much love, Scorpio. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your patience. And I'll talk to you guys next week.